This is my wireless doorbell project. If I press this button, light will light up to indicate that the button's been pressed and of course the wireless message is received at the other end, decoded, and we get a doorbell sound. So what does this consist of? Well, basically a low quiescent current, low dropout regulator here that gives us 3.3 volts from this 4.5 volt supply. That's used to power this MSP430 microcontroller. Now most of the time it spends uh, its life in LPM3, low power mode 3, using about 2 microamps or so. When we hit the reset button, the microcontroller springs into action. Run some code that sends out a simple data packet out to this 433 MHz transmitter here that's coupled to this little aerial here that provides more than enough range to reach the wireless receiver where that same message is decoded and the chime is sounded. In this part of the video I'm going to talk about the schematic diagram and design for my wireless doorbell transmitter. So it's based on something that I created last year, a project that was really centered around power control and using the low quiescent current properties of the MSP430G2211 to create a very simple power control module. The idea here was to have a lot of flexibility. Uh, so you could get, say, a P-channel MOSFET here for doing some load switching, a couple of LEDs so you could monitor what's going on and present the status, a couple of switches to switch things on and off or just to reset the MSP430, programming header, watch crystal, uh, low dropout regulator, regulating down to 3.3 volts, and uh, a voltage divider for, uh, say, measuring voltage on a computer input or an ADC on one of these devices, and uh, a little uncommitted um, NPN transistor here as well. So here's the schematic for that same board. I should say that that board was designed to be really easy to produce at home using the toner transfer method. So there's no holes in it to be drilled or anything like that. Really simple thing to etch at home and then start working with. Okay, so there's that 3.3 volt low dropout regulator. I've made provision for quite a, a lot of decoupling uh, capacitors here. Always good to have spare spots for decoupling capacitors if even if you find you don't need to populate them all. Then here is the little uh, MSP430 microcontroller. I like this microcontroller because it requires really minimum parts in order to get it up and running. So in this case I've just got uh, a watch crystal here, little tuning fork style crystal, and there are internal capacitors within the MSP430 that you can enable which saves you having to put external capacitors around the crystal, as is usually the case. There's a programming header, and then all the other pins are broken out, so you can connect them up to other parts of uh, this board as you'd like. There's then a high side BOSFET driver here to use uh, to, to switch loads on and off. It's a logic level MOSFET, the uh, P-channel FDN340P, I believe it's from Fairchild, and um, Basically it's got a, a pull-up resistor here just to ensure that it's in the off state when the outputs from the microcontroller are in high, high impedance. Uh, but then uh, you can pull the control pin low using one of the microcontroller outputs and then the load, which would usually be connected here, can be switched on. A couple of switches. One of these might be used to say link to the reset pin. And the other switch might be used, say, in a power control application as a soft on and off button, that kind of thing. A couple of LEDs just to display status, as mentioned earlier. And uh, there's the uh, open collector transistor and the voltage divider. So how is this put to use for the doorbell project? Well, here it is, the doorbell implementation using this little power controller board. Three AAA cells here giving four and a half volts when fully charged. They feed into the low dropout regulator. 
This is used to power the MSP430. Also to provide power to the source of the MOSFET and to provide power to the pull-up resistor that's connected to this reset button. The reset button hooks to the reset line of the microcontroller. So whenever you press that button, which just happens to be the, the button that you use to ding the doorbell, it resets the microcontroller. Microcontroller just cycles through um, a little bit of code. When that code has finished, the microcontroller goes to sleep and that's really it until it's reset again. Now, there are three uh, outputs uh, that are used on the MSP430G2211. So when that button is pressed, the first thing it does is to pull this power latch output low and that switches on this P-channel MOSFET that then provides 3.3 volts to the transmitter module. After the voltage rails here have had a little chance to stabilise, say 100 milliseconds or so have passed, the MSP430 then the code writes a little bit of data to this uh, output pin here and that's fed to the transmitter module and the transmitter module sends that packet, sends it three times in total. Uh, that way we can be sure that the message has got through. And the last connection here is to an LED that just lights up when the button is pressed just to indicate that the microcontroller is responding and that the packet is going out through the transmitter module. So that's really all there is to it. This may not be entirely necessary, so one other option is to actually just power the transmitter module from one of these output ports uh, directly, just so bring that output port high before sending this data out and then take it low again or put it in a high impedance state so that this effectively shuts down when it's not required to save current, uh, save a little bit of energy consumption. But I had this uh, P-channel MOSFET on hand. Uh, it proven itself in other projects. So I thought, well, might as well hook it up, control it in this manner. And uh, that in any event is uh, guaranteed to switch a lot more current than could be sourced from one of these microcontroller pins. So that's it for the schematic. In the next video, I'm going to do some measurement of the current consumption of this thing. And from that, do some calculations to work out how long the battery will last. Till that video, uh, please like, subscribe, and thank you for watching.